Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor. A few years ago I bought a very old and quite famous wooden sailing boat for the price of one dollar and since then I've been rebuilding that boat from the keel up with the help of a lot of amazing people. Now this video is all about running out the bowsprit. The bowsprit itself was made here in Port Townsend by a local spa builder called Bruce Tipton and he did a beautiful job on it. It's a different timber from the other spars, it's Douglas fir and the reason for that is that as it's a very low spar the weight is less important so uh, I wasn't so concerned about using spruce uh, and it's also a spar which typically gets more abuse and Douglas fir is a bit more uh, compression and abrasion resistant than spruce. Right now it is in our finishing booth uh, where David and Bailey are applying the final final coat of varnish. So the bowsprit has had its final coat of varnish and of course it's looking fantastic. Now in our varnish booth there's lots of uh, different stuff going on. We've got the bowsprit in there, there's also a lot of uh, different cabinetry in there uh, building up coats. For most of that stuff, uh, all the interior cabinetry and in fact the exterior woodwork as well, we're using a varnish called Le Tonquinois which is a linseed oil based varnish and that has a lot of advantages. Uh, it's very easy to work with, it's uh, very soft so it can uh, allow a little bit more movement in the wood. But for the spars, um, the spruce spars and the bowsprit as well, the Douglas fir bowsprit, uh, we've used a different product called All Wood uh, from the company All Grip. And that is a much more modern, high tech style of varnish. Uh, and the reason we've used that on the spars is because, well, mainly they're made of spruce, which is a very soft wood and prone to uh, compression and uh, abrasion damage. Uh, you know, although obviously the advantage of spruce is it's so light um, and in the spars in particular they're very hard to access, they're hard to inspect and harder to maintain that varnish. So using a hard product uh, should resist chafe and abrasion more, should protect the spars for longer. And we've done the same thing on the bowsprit for the same reasons uh, and plus it's the first uh, bit of the boat that you tend to poke into other boats when you're racing. Now that the bowsprit has had all nine coats of this product, we're going to take it out of the finish booth and get it on the deck of the boat. Hey dude, what are we doing? <laughs> uh, I'm walking down the stairs with a camera. Oh I'm yeah? Saying. Oh, doing? okay. Right on. Okay, cool. <laughs> and then we're going to put the bow spread on the boat. Woo! Bow spread on deck! Woo! Woo! So it's a pretty exciting day here for us. We're about to run out the bowsprit over the bow. Tally ho, for the first time ever. And uh, it's 
it should be a fairly simple operation, but it's the first time we've done it, so we're going to be taking it nice and slow. Uh, basically just using different halides and lines to balance it uh, as we get it through uh, the gambling iron out there and through the bits here, hopefully avoiding the hatch and uh, hopefully avoiding the hatch. We will be avoiding the hatch. <laughs> Lower, back aft. Let's just pause here for a sec. Okay. Yeah, it's like a soft interface. Yeah, dude. It fits. Yeah, just when it's resting. Yeah. It feels like it's sticking already on something. It's, it's, all, it's still low. Hold, hold that yeah, for a sec. Are we touching the hatch? Uh, we are. So that didn't quite work. Uh, we just found as we uh, had to get the bow spread out around this hatch, and all the angles there are, are pretty close. And you know, with the position of the the bits and the gamma and everything, that was all sort of laid out to allow the bow spread to just sneak in around the side of the hatch before being lined up parallel to the center line. Uh, and it's pretty close, but we didn't quite relieve the uh, cap rail and the board planks enough. Uh, so it was rubbing on them. So we couldn't get it all the way out. So we just have to bring it in again, take a little bit more timber off there. And hopefully next time it'll go out, but it is really tight. So we're a little bit nervous, but um, fingers crossed. So Bob is just making some slight adjustments to the hole he made in the bulwark planks to allow the bowsprit to get out there a little bit easier. But while he's doing that, I just want to tell you something cool about our bowsprit. Now the Douglas fir piece of timber that the bowsprit's made of actually came from a Salvation Army building that was in Seattle. It was reclaimed when that building was taken down. Now that building uh, was about as old as Tally Ho. So the tree for the bowsprit was felled probably at the same time when Tally Ho's original timbers were being felled. Now there were some pretty big pieces of wood that came out of this building and although of course they were worn and degraded a little bit on the outside, on the inside the wood was as good as new, in fact better because it was so well seasoned. And this particular piece of wood must have been out of a huge tree because we were able to get our entire bowsprit without any glue joints or anything like that. Uh, out of a bit of wood that didn't have any pith in it. And the pith is the heart center of the tree. So imagine a tree right up the middle is the center. And having the heart center or the pith in the piece of wood does make it quite a lot less structurally stable. So really cool to get such a clean, clear and tight grained piece of wood. And there's a few knots in it, but it's a beautiful piece and so cool that it's been sitting there waiting for all this time uh, while Tally Ho has been out sailing and getting up to all her adventures. What did you do just now? Uh, I just eased the, uh, the little tunnel I had carved out before in the bulwarks and the cap rail here. I just removed a little bit of more wood strategically where the bowsprit was rubbing and needs a little bit more room. Cool. So everything is going to fit now? Uh, I'm 100% confident that it's about to go out. Wow. I'm going to I'm going to come out strong. I'm going to wow. take a strong position that okay. um, our modifications are successful. In fact, I don't think we should go slow. I think we should full send. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to put a bet on on that? Uh Yeah, I would bet money. Oh, you'd bet money. I'm not going to, but I would. <laughs> would you bet organs? I'll bet a, I'll bet a round after work. But that means that if it does go out, you each have to buy me one. Fair enough. <laughs> each way. of us. That does mean that you have to drink. You have to drink them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ice cream. What are you guys talking about? Oh, oh ice cream. It's doing right. It's worth doing right the second time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Risky. Yikes! <laughs> Okay, can you come in board neck? Yep, just a little bit here. Nice. Nice. Alright, right, put pause there. Bob can go ahead and come down here. Yeah, there we go. There it is.
Did it, did it come down at all there, Leo? No, it's sitting on it. Sitting on it. Well, after Bob's very confident preamble to this operation, it didn't quite work. <laughs> didn't quite uh, fit <laughs> again. But we're getting there. We've got a plan. Just have to take a little bit more off the cap rail. Um, third time's a charm, hopefully. Alright Bob, how are we yeah. feeling this time? <laughs> What's your confidence level as a percentage out of 100? We're going double or nothing. Because <laughs> I can't afford to pay the bookie from last time. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's, let's move. Slip it through there and then We're Bob, just... you're going to be all of our uncle. So we're making contact with the cap now. All right, we're about to contact the hatch here. You know what they say, <laughs> third time, unlucky. <laughs> Fourth time's the charm. Third time, progress. Fourth time. Well, it's the next morning, and uh, we're on attempt four. We're feeling good. We're feeling good, everyone. Feeling good. Feeling good. Feeling good. All right. Feeling good. We'll see. This is just the way it goes. It's uh, you know, we don't want to take too much off and regret it. So we're just taking a little bit off, trying it again, a little bit off, uh, and that's the way to you know, hopefully get it so it's an, the nicest fit we can without removing too much material. So. I'm giving Bob a hard time, but uh, he's doing a hey, great I job. Pat for this whole thing. <laughs> you got the weight on that? How do you know, Patty? Yeah, we got the weight. Good. Hold that back here.
So after a lot of work, the bowsprit is in and it looks fantastic, it feels great. Huge thanks to Bruce for making the spa and to Bob for uh, so much hard work getting it fitted. Uh, and I want to reiterate that um, you know, fitting something like this again and again is just part of the job sometimes. And uh, when you're trying to be careful, when it's something critical, that's how it goes. So he really did do a fantastic job on this. Um, normally, this sort of operation, taking the bowsprit in and out once it's all set up, should be pretty easy, uh, should be pretty fluid, pretty simple thing. Uh, on a lot of boats, uh, it might be something that's done every time you go sailing even, if you have to come into a berth where you need your bowsprit housed to get into the berth. Uh, on this boat, uh, trying to get the bowsprit around the hatch and having the cap rail go over it and certain design choices, uh, it is tighter, <laughs> it's closer than uh, I would have liked, but it is possible. And um, you know, as we pull it back in and out and in and out a few more times, we'll work out um, you know, how much leeway we've got and the best and easiest way of doing it. And hopefully we'll eventually be able to do it you know, with just a couple of people in just a few minutes. So anyway, really happy about that. Next step is to get the top mast up uh, in terms of rigging. Uh, of course, there's also lots of work going on inside the boat um, and all sorts of other stuff happening in various places around the world, sail making and capstan work. And we're gonna catch up with all of that soon. But for now, thanks a lot for watching and a massive, massive thank you to everyone who has donated or otherwise supported this project. It does make a huge difference. It means we're able to keep on doing this work and we're able to keep on making and editing these videos. So I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.